I secretly entered my affluent relatus home and discovered my daughter cleaning the floors. Shocking stories. It was a cold and stormy night when my phone rang, cutting through the eerie silence of my small apartment. The wind howled outside, and the rain tapped incessantly against the windows, creating a somber symphony. I reached for my phone, the name on the screen sending a jolt of anxiety through me. Mom, a slim voice trembled, barely above a whisper. I need your help. Aslin, what's wrong? Where are you? I asked, my voice heavy with concern. I'm at Aunt Vivian's house, she replied, her voice cracking. Mom, you have to come. It's, it's not what I thought it would be. Please come quickly. Before I could ask more questions, the line went dead. I stared at my phone, my mind racing. Islina had decided to spend a few months with my wealthy sister Vivian and her family, hoping to experience a different lifestyle. But now it seemed something was terribly wrong. My maternal instincts screamed at me to go to her immediately, but I knew Vivian would never let me in without a fight. I had to find another way. Vivian and I had always been different. While I chose a simple life, she married into wealth and embraced a world of luxury and privilege. Our relationship was strained, and we rarely spoke, but Aisling had always been curious about her aunt's glamorous life. Now, as I paced my living room, I regretted ever letting Aisling go. I needed to get into Vivian's house without raising suspicion. An idea began to form. I would disguise myself and infiltrate the mansion. It was risky, but my daughter's desperate voice echoed in my mind, and I knew I had no choice. The next few days were a blur of preparations. I dyed my hair a dull brown, bought a pair of thick-rimmed glasses, and scurred thrift stores for a maid's uniform. I also practiced speaking with a slight accent to further obscure my identity. When I finally looked at myself in the mirror, I barely recognized the person staring back. I was ready. I applied for a maid position at Vivienne's mansion, and within a week, I received a call for an interview. The day of the interview was jock and overcast, matching my anxious mood. As I approached the imposing gates of Vivienne's estate, I felt a surge of determination. I had to get inside and find Esleen. The interview was conducted by Mrs. Thatcher, the stern and no-nonsense housekeeper. She eyed me critically as I introduced myself as Emily Clark. You have experience working in large homes, she asked, her pen poised over a clipboard. Yes, ma'am, I replied, keeping my eyes downcast. I've worked in several estates, managing all household duties. She nodded, seemingly satisfied. You start tomorrow at 6 a.m. sharp. Don't be late. I nodded, suppressing a sigh of relief. I had made it inside. The first step of my plan was complete. The next morning, I arrived at the mansion before dawn. Mrs. Thatcher handed me a list of chores and sent me on my way. The house was even more opulent than I had imagined, with marble floors, crystal chandeliers, and priceless artwork adorning the walls. But I wasn't here to admire the decor. I was here to find Esleen. For the next few days, I performed my duties diligently, using every opportunity to search for Esleen. I cleaned rooms, dusted furniture, and polished silverware, all the while keeping my eyes and ears open, but there was no sign of her. One evening, as I was cleaning the library, I overheard a conversation between Vivienne and her husband, Charles. My heart raced as I strained to hear every word. Isley needs to learn her place, Vivienne said, her voice cold and authoritative. She's too independent, too rebellious. Charles sighed. I thought bringing her here would help her understand our way of life, but she's resisting. If she doesn't fall in line, We'll have to take more drastic measures, Vivienne added, her tone menacing. My blood ran cold. What did they mean by drastic measures? I had to find Esleen and get her out of here before it was too late. One afternoon, while cleaning the kitchen, I noticed a door slightly ajar at the far end of the room. Curiosity peaked, I quietly slipped through the door and found myself in a narrow hallway. At the end of the hallway was another door, this one heavy and reinforced. I pressed my ear against the door, 
hearing muffled voices on the other side. My heart pounded as I slowly turned the handle and peeked inside. What I saw made my blood boil. Isleen was there, dressed in a maid's uniform, scrubbing the floor. Her face was pale, and she looked exhausted. My precious daughter, reduced to a servant in her own family's house. I had to bite my lip to keep from crying out. Isleen, I whispered urgently, stepping into the room. She looked up, her eyes widening in shock. Mom, what are you doing here? I came to find you, I said, rushing to her side. We need to get out of here, now. Tears welled up in her eyes as she shook her head. I can't. They won't let me leave. They're watching me all the time. I hugged her tightly, my heart breaking for her. We'll find a way. I promise. Just hold on a little longer. Over the next few days, I gathered as much information as I could. I learned that Vivienne and Charles had been using Asleen as unpaid labor to avoid hiring additional staff. They had confiscated her phone and restricted her access to the outside world. She was essentially a prisoner in their home. The more I learned, the more determined I became to free her. I formulated a plan. I would gather evidence of their mistreatment and contact the authorities. It was risky, but I was willing to do whatever it took to protect my daughter. One night, as I was cleaning the library, I noticed a peculiar book on one of the shelves. It was slightly ajar, as if someone had recently pulled it out. My curiosity peaked. I pulled the book, and to my astonishment, the shelf swung open, revealing a hidden room. My heart raced as I stepped inside. The room was filled with documents, photographs, and other evidence of Vivienne and Charles' illegal activities. I took out my phone and began taking pictures, my hands shaking with adrenaline. As I was about to leave, I heard footsteps approaching. Panic surged through me, but I managed to hide behind a heavy curtain just in time. Vivienne and Charles entered the room, discussing their plans to send Isleen away to a boarding school where they could keep her under even tighter control. My heart raced as I listened, knowing that I had to act fast. The next morning, I contacted a lawyer and explained the situation. With the evidence I had gathered, we had a strong case against Vivienne and Charles. The lawyer assured me that we could get Isleen out of there, but it would take time. In the meantime, I had to keep Isleen safe. I devised an escape plan and shared it with her during one of our brief, clandestine meetings. We would wait for the perfect moment when Vivienne and Charles were distracted and make our move. The day of our escape arrived. Isleen and I were both on edge, but determined to see it through. As luck would have it, there was a grand party being held at the mansion that night. Vivienne and Charles were preoccupied with their guests, giving us the perfect opportunity. We made our way through the winding hallways, avoiding the partygoers and security staff. Just as we reached the back door, we were confronted by Vivienne and Charles. You can't leave, Vivienne hissed, her eyes blazing with fury. We'll ruin you. Try me, I replied calmly, holding up my phone. I have evidence of everything. If you don't let us go, this will go public. Charles' face turned ashen, and he stepped aside, allowing us to pass. With the lawyer's help, we secured Isleen freedom and took legal action against Vivienne and Charles. Isleen and I moved into a small apartment, far away from the toxic environment of her aunt's family. It took time, but with therapy and a lot of love, Isleen began to heal. She returned to her vibrant, spirited self, and our bond grew stronger than ever. The experience had changed us both. We learned the importance of standing up for ourselves and each other, no matter the odds. Our journey was far from over, but we faced it together, ready to take on whatever challenges came our way. The evidence I had gathered was instrumental in bringing Vivienne and Charles to justice. They were charged with multiple counts of illegal activity, including human trafficking and exploitation. The trial was long and grueling, but in the end, they were found guilty and sentenced to prison. Isleen and I attended every day of the trial, finding strength in each other. 
The sight of Vivienne and Charles being led away in handcuffs was a moment of vindication, but it was bittersweet. We had lost so much, but we had also gained a newfound sense of resilience and determination. With the trial behind us, Isleen and I focused on rebuilding our lives. We moved to a new city where no one knew our past and started fresh. Isleen enrolled in college, pursuing her dream of becoming a social worker, determined to help others who had been through similar ordeals. As for me, I found work as a teacher, finding joy in helping young minds grow and flourish. Our new life was simple, but it was filled with love and hope. We had been through the fire and emerged stronger, ready to face whatever the future held. Our journey had been a long and arduous one, filled with fear, pain, and uncertainty. But it was also a testament to the power of love and the unbreakable bond between a mother and daughter. No matter how dark the path, we had found our way through, guided by our love for each other.